This is Indianapolis coach, Retro Wayne, and you're listening to the For the Culture podcast. This is the For the Culture podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond, with my man, Jason Spears. The Colts signed 10 undrafted free agents following the 2020 draft. We're going to highlight the two guys that we think have the best chance to make this roster. A roster that already has a couple of really good undrafted free agents on it. Kenny Moore in 2017, Jack Doyle in 2013. Doyle's went on to have two Pro Bowl seasons. Kenny Moore probably got snubbed over Pro Bowl last year playing the slot. Didn't get the credit he would have gotten had he played outside the numbers. So we're going to highlight the two guys that we think have the best chance to make this roster in 2020, starting with kicker Rodrigo Blankenship out of the University of Georgia, won the Lou Groza Award in 2019, which is awarded to the top kicker in the nation, and went first team All-SEC. In his career at the University of Georgia, he was their all-time leading scorer, and he went 200 for 200 on extra points. Yes, the extra point in college is about 13 yards closer than in the NFL, but that is music to my ears. Let me have this moment after the season Adam Benedetti just had kicking extra points. Dating back to the end of 2018, there was a point where he went about eight or nine games kicking sub-70% on extra points. That is absolutely unacceptable. I believe the extra point in the NFL is 32 or 33 yards, so it's deeper than in college. But in Rodrigo Blankenship's career at the University of Georgia, he never missed a kick inside of 30 yards, which I love. If you get down there inside the 25, inside the 20-yard line, you're almost guaranteed that he's going to put three on the board if the offense stalls. Unlike last season when Adam Vinatieri missed a 29-yard field goal week one against the Chargers in a game that went to overtime. He missed an extra point in that game. He missed multiple extra points from the end of 2018 through the point where he got injured and had to go on the IR in 2019. So last year was an abomination as far as the kicking game in Indianapolis. Chase McLaughlin took over and did a good job. He only missed one kick, didn't miss an extra point, missed one kick against the Tampa Bay Bucks, a 47-yard field goal. We end up losing a close game in Tampa Bay. He'll have an opportunity to compete for the job with Rodrigo, but this is a guy that we were thinking about using a late-round pick on. We were able to get him as an undrafted free agent, and we're absolutely thrilled about that because this guy was one of the best kickers in college football over the past couple seasons, and he has a stronger leg than Chase. Chase was very reliable inside of 45 but you want a guy who's able to kick from 50-plus, and Rodrigo Blinkenship brings that ability to the team and immediately makes our special teams unit better. And Ballard put a big emphasis on special teams in the back half of this draft with Isaiah Rogers, with Jordan Glasgow, and then with the undrafted free agents in Rodrigo Blinkenship, one of the best kickers in the country over the last two seasons and one of the two undrafted free agents that we think have a great chance to make the Colts roster in 2020. He's got a solid frame, very poised and confident, and very mentally tough. He's quick to the ball and technically sound. He made six out of nine 50-yard kicks with a high of 55 yards. He made five of five kicks in his last game, played in a driving rainstorm, and the longest of that was a 50-yard kick, and it's never easy to kick in wind and and you add in rain, wind and rain, that's pretty impressive. So five of five in his last game. Uh, in a driving rainstorm that's a great way to go into your nfl career proving that you can kick in the elements after you kicked in pretty great weather most of the time at georgia he's a very confident kid he can be stubborn at times about technique he doesn't like to change things so maybe a little difficult to coach that could have something to do with being coached by his dad all through high school i mean he's basically been coached by his dad and then got into college and uh was coached by i think two different guys so Uh, I think Mark Rick and then Kirby Smart. So that's been something that's been talked about. He's a little stubborn, but I think, you know, you get used to something and it takes a while to get adjusted to new surroundings and new people giving you advice and and trusting that person. The main thing about technique and that type of stuff is you have to trust the person that's giving you that advice. And I'm sure that the Colts will have a guy, whether that's Bubba Ventrone or somebody else, that he's going to be confident in that it's going to give him advice he has very little experience kicking in bad conditions, but I did find that one condition the last game he played that was, was pretty bad. And he did as good as you can do five out of five, one from 49 or 50, I think it was and driving rain. So he's proven that he can do that. The majority of his games are going to be played. The most important games he's going to play are going to be played in Jacksonville 
which is, you know, kicking in good weather most of the time. Tennessee, maybe late, it's going to be cold, but really the weather's ne- never been super bad when we've played there. And then you're playing in, you know, Houston, which is a dome, and our place, which is a dome. So not a lot of problems there. So I don't think that's going to be a big issue. The playoffs would be probably where weather might come into play. But I think this kid has enough mental toughness to overcome whatever he's got to overcome. One thing I noticed about his misses, and there weren't that many of them, but when he had them, they came in bunches. So in two of the, I think two of the losses that Georgia had last year, he missed two kicks. He missed multiple kicks. So, and I think that included the South Carolina upset. So maybe that's something that gets in his head during the game. I don't know. Or maybe it's just coincidence. But, you know, again, you get NFL coaches working with you and all that comes with that. I think that can be improved. As far as technically maintaining rhythm and hitting the contact spot consistently must be improved. Again, get in there with an NFL coach. I think all that stuff can be improved. I think this kid has a really, really, really good chance of making the Colts roster off the bat because he's got such a strong leg. He's definitely got a stronger leg than McLaughlin, and I think he's got a leg up as far as he can make kicks from anywhere. He can make make them from 60-plus. McLaughlin's never going to do that so uh, he's just got to come in and and learn do his thing and and then hopefully you know show it on the field that he's the guy and I think we all hope this is the guy that takes it and runs with it you know I talked to Luke about him probably four or five months ago and I said this is the kid I think I want kicking for us for the next 10 years after watching him so I've been following this guy for a while and I think he's got what it takes and I think he will end up being the starting kicker for the Indianapolis Colts. So really, really like this guy. A couple other things I like about him is, you know, he blends the power and accuracy well. He's got he's got the raw leg strength that you need in the NFL. It's NFL caliber right now. Uh, I think maybe the guy that we have, McLaughlin, locks, lacks that a little bit. But he gets good trajectory on the balls, doesn't get a lot blocked, and he has range, like I said, up to 60-plus. So, again, there's a lot of pluses with this guy and not many minuses that I could find. So, a really good signing by Chris Ballard. I think this certainly is going to make for an interesting kicking competition with those two guys. I think the Venetary train is definitely going to land somewhere else and not in Indianapolis next year because uh, I think we're in pretty good hands with the two guys we got, especially with Rodrigo Blankenship signing the free agent deal.